match is another d day review. It's time to dive into the depths of beer from whom? Well, from kind of like our friends, I think kind of, sort of, at AB InBev out of St. Louis, Missouri, US of A. Yay, yay. Also known as like Anheuser Busch Big Brewing Plant. And what beer do we have from the depths of Macro Land today? We have there. Budweiser Black Lager. This is a Schwartz beer, kind of, sort of. I'll get into that in a minute. This is a winter serving slash late fall. October through December, they're saying. Limited, that is. It clocks in at 7.1% ABV and probably 17 to 30 IBUs for the style, which we'll get, like I said, we'll get into that. It's a little bit of kind of a hybrid sort of style. But anyway, they do say in this beer, they use dark two row malt. They don't say what hops they use. Well, I'm sure they're using their proprietary, you know, Budweiser lager yeast. And this has been aged on six year old Jim Beam bourbon barrel staves. So that may mean that it's coming from like maybe uh, Jim Beam black barrels. Cause that, that Jim Beam Black's approximately six years. It used to, back in the day, have a six-year age statement on it. So, this is the second collab that they've done with Jim Beam. This first uh, collab was our friend Copper Lager here, which I thought was pretty good. It wasn't a mind blower, but it was tasty. So, you know what? I'm hoping we got a little bit of amped up sort of ABV in this one, in this like short, you heard me say like Schwartz beer. Well, uh, to me, from what I read about what they're saying the flavors are supposed to be like in the beer, we're kind of in between maybe like a Dunkel lager and a Schwartz beer, but it's amped up and stronger than both of those are per style. So maybe it's an American Schwartz beer. Who knows? So, you know what? Stop, time to stop flapping my gums. Pop the top on this bad boy. Yeah, I know it's a, a twisty. Don't do those. And get in the glass and we tell what's up with Budweiser Black Lager. Hell yes. Boom. Nice hiss off the top, I guess. Obsessively collectible Anheuser-Busch Crown. It looks nice. Mmm, nice aromas coming off the top here. A little bit of chocolatey action and stuff going on. Let's get in the glass. Ooh, that's nice. Kind of a brownish, sort of garnety amber color coming out on this one. Nice. Oh, I'm already talking about the appearance. Let's go. So, it's definitely garnet colored when you put it up to the light and you'll see a lot of ruby glints coming through. We got a super solid, very tightly packed one finger head of sort of khaki colored, colored bubbles. When I swirl it, we're getting nice alcohol clinging down to the inside of the glass. And we may get some glass lacing. But look at that. Pretty nice looking brew. Ah, <sighs> but... You know, in the glass, if it's pretty like that, and, you know, a nice-looking brew in the glass, etc., is awesome. But it better smell good, too. So you know what we're going to do now. We're going to dive in for that aroma! Mm. Right off the front, I get a little bit of, like, lager yeast, kind of like that sort of wet penny sort of smell. Okay, now that's the head subsided some more. I'm getting some nice caramel aromas. Faint coffee, uh, burnt brown sugar toffee. Nice hit of vanilla. I'm not really getting bourbon. Maybe a little bit of char in the background. I don't know if that's malt or it's coming from the barrel staves. That's about it. Malt sweetness. Toffee, coffee, some of those darker aromas. Nice vanilla. Not a hint of alcohol in the aroma. And those lager yeast esters. The penny aroma has kind of gone down now. The metallic sort of penny aroma. And now it's more lager yeast esters. Smells good. Let's dive in. Cheers! Hmm. Oh, tastes better than it smells. Hmm. Right at the front. Roasty, toasty, sort of malt notes. After that, caramel. Decent amount of vanilla in there. Vanilla flavor in there. Hmm. Really crisp, clean, dry finish. Kind of a signature of Budweiser branded product. Uh, this was the, Both of these were really crisp and clean in the back end. 7.1% is completely hidden. A lot of caramel taste. A lot of burnt brown sugar and toffee taste. Decent bit of vanilla. Not really getting bourbon. Maybe a really, really faint ghost of bourbon. If I was drinking this and I didn't know it had a barrel treatment or barrel aging or stave aging, I might not say that it's been you know, treated in that way. The taste reminds me, kind of, of um, hmm, a beer back in the day. You have to stretch your beer memory back. I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but it was uh, Guinness Red Harvest Lager. That had a lot of these same kind of red ale and sort of sports beer, sort of kind of combined notes. That was a red stout or a harvest stout. 
this is like a almost like a red porter kind of in flavor but a lot of parallels between those beers super clean easy to drink just uh i'm missing the jim beam in it i missed it in this beer as well it's just not there jim beam has a uh, like a really pronounced bourbon signature and that's like a peanutty type flavor in jim beam if you drink enough of it plus it's got this bourbon notes of vanilla and tannins from the wood and things of that sort but all in all not a not a bad beer at all i'm just not getting a whole lot of the as advertised jim beam flavor even as i drink it down there's a little bit there but like i say if i didn't know it was supposed to be that i might not pick it out i might just say hey it's a characteristic of the beer so i'm liking it <clears throat> my mind's not blown but really a tasty beer acceptable not a drain pour or anything like that so let's grade it at time recording beer advocate is given this 3.87 out of 5 so that's about 88 um untapped is given this 3.53 out of 5 probably about in that like 87 88 range so we're talking like b pluses all the way around let me take one more taste I think just as a dark lager, it's kind of it's definitely a high B plus beer. The only thing that detracts it for this from this beer to me, the as advertised uh, you know flavor of Jim Beam or have some bourbon notes in there, really aren't there. I'm drinking this pretty, pretty fairly warm too. It's about like 49, 50 degrees, something like that. So if you're going to get those flavors, it's going to be in that temperature range, and they're just not there. But you know what? Not to knock on it, it's still a tasty beer. I'm going to go B plus 87. So. That's my grade. Have you had Budweiser's Black Lager? If you have, let me know what you know because I like the quid pro quo <laughs> and the back and forth. I also like it when you think low, we drink locally and support the, the craft beer movement and maybe the crafty or micro, macro beer movement. Let's support the beer movement. Anyway, also, <laughs> you can do me a big favor by rating, commenting, subscribing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know. After you give me that quid pro quo in the back and forth, you're going to do that, especially if you're your sub up, especially if it's your first time with us. And if you can get around to it, do me a great big favor and smash that like button because that, along with one bottle of this, it's not bad, is all I'm going to need today to put my big ass beer drinking happy face on. So, these DJ Fruit Tube, I got nothing but a, I guess, hell a bunch of Budweiser Black Lager drinking love for you, and you know what's coming for you by now. Hell yes, a big ass peace out!